corner um, to talk about the Little Miami Conservancy. Um, tell us a little bit how you your history with the Little Miami River. Well, I <clears throat> I love the river. I've fished there uh, all my life, and uh, when I was on the park board, we actually made some parks down there and, and got some property uh, and and canoe launches and things like that because it runs through the entire county and it's one of the most wonderful things features natural features about the county. So, and who took you there? How did you first start going there? Did you have family? This is hard to believe. <laughs> when I was eight years old, which I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, <laughs> my dad drove the whole family all the way out there from Western Hills. <laughs> I mean, it took like a half a day. There were no uh, no uh, interstates. And we, uh, we swam. Uh, there was a park called Glen Island, um, which is now uh, is, is pretty close to Landon. And it was just a lovely place, and I remembered that, and I don't know how I got back out, but I thought, wow, this is the place, you know, this is where I was when I was a kid, so. No, you have to, your, your parent, your dad to thank for that. Yeah. He helped, helped give you that wonderful yeah. memory. Yes, he did. And the Conservancy is about, is having its 50th anniversary, is 50th that correct? 50th anniversary, right. That's, and tell us a little bit about, um, the changes that the organization has fought for all this time. This Don't. this conservancy <coughs> uh, um, actually helped form the Scenic Rivers legislation that enabled uh, special rivers to get protection. Uh, it's a national scenic river. We were one of the first, and, and some of our founding members actually went to Washington and testified in favor of this uh, of this legislation just like the people did for the national parks <clears throat> so some of those people are still with us <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have them at our celebration because uh, from there we do cleanups we uh, we work to get uh, recognition of local governments to to prevent building right up to the river I mean this is a national wild and scenic river we don't want apartments and condominiums all up and down the river because it wouldn't live if we had that. It has to have its natural corridor. When, when it f this um, organization first started, were you seeing, what, what kind of changes were you seeing that you weren't happy with? <laughs> well, I wasn't there, <laughs> but um, it, it, the river suffered from some uh, industrial development. <clears throat> And, and uh, some of it's still there, you know, in the upper reaches of the river. And um, there were uh, subdivisions and things being built, and you can see that the most attractive of land, fortunately, in the early days, people didn't build homes and subdivisions on cliffs and mountains. Now they love to do that, you know, and those are the most expensive ones. But uh, to have the recognition by the county and by townships and so on that this is a wonderful thing which is an asset to the county and to our lives that's that's really what our goal has been okay tell us then how did you decide to become an author of this children's book I wanted to have more fun than I ever <laughs> had in my life <laughs> we were in the conservancy we're interested in perpetuating the stewardship that we have c created. You have to get young people involved to do that. Mm -hmm. And what better way than to, to get kids and families involved and guess what? There's something going on beneath the surface. I mean, we love canoeing and paddling and we see the animals, but um, what's beneath the surface? That was the idea that we had initially. And tell us a little bit more about the story that you wanted to tell, what's beneath the surface, but did you, you, can you tell us a little bit about this story and this character in this book? Sure. The character uh, is a smallmouth bass. We had a spring, a hard spring rain. I think we're familiar with those now. <laughs> yes, that's right. We can see a picture of him there. They're sunny, yeah, right? The river came up. That's Sonny and some of his friends. The river came up and just washed him downstream. I mean, there are overwhelming situations for, for fish. And when he, when he finally stopped, uh, there was um, a um, great blue heron. And they usually eat fish. <laughs> but there were two of them, and they said, hey, let's see if we can help this guy find his way home. So that was the story. By going from point A to B, they took him to Bob the Beaver and Myrtle the Turtle and 
crayfish ray and and uh, each one played a little part in helping him get back home and finally he did so <laughs> i gave away the end of yeah. the story oh, oh, no. <laughs> so that's all right <laughs> and, and you did it all in, in rhyme which i think is really fun was that was that easy for you or is that Challenging. Well, it was so easy that it added an extra year onto the book. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I thought, hey, this is going to be cool, you know. But when you decide to do the whole thing in rhyme, there's some very difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> issues. And, and so it, it was hard, but I love it. I, I, I love the sound of it and the rhythm and all that. And I think children like that, too. They do. I think you think about how you learn, and, and, and it's a rhythm. You, you have rhythm when you're reading. And, and, it's and Dr. Seuss. Oh that's right. That's how we all learn with that. And, and just think of the lessons that you learn from the Dr. Seuss books. I mean, there's ecology in there, and, and there's don't waste uh, trees and protect it. It's wonderful. Yeah, uh, go dog go and hop on pop. I yeah. can remember all yeah. of those. Uh, now, James, tell, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself and where you work. Um, I, so I grew up really close uh, to the river in uh, Madisonville. Uh, it's like eastern Cincinnati, and I grew up playing along the river. Mm. And I went through school, University of Cincinnati, for graphic design, and I ended up uh, practicing graphic design at uh, LBK. They're an international branding agency agency downtown in downtown Cincinnati. So in 2014, uh, Bill came to me, the Little Miami Conservancy came to me, we, br we branded the Conservancy. And that was really fun to work with them. And that's how we got acquainted. Yeah. And you were branding the Conservancy. What, what's the brand that you, mm -hmm. you um, had for the Conservancy? So the old it branding was kind of this, uh, it was a really beautiful image of a man like coexisting with nature. And we made it much more uh, nature-centric, and we love the idea of the heron being almost a steward for the conservancy. And so we centered on that and just uh, this pristine nature of it. Um, we can we create a very simple mark with the heron in it, and just these really beautiful colors of like bright blues and greens that really show the pristine nature of what they've done and and how they brought it back. And we have uh, we've seen a little a few mm -hmm. samples of some of your artwork. Um, did you see the characters the way Bill was, uh, the way, um, did you have a vision for them or mm -hmm. did Bill, did you and Bill share the same vision? Actually, for the most part, yeah. And it was a really great process where we worked together a lot. Um, I think first, um, my first vision for the book was to have a really simplified version of the characters. And we worked together. Who's the author that uh, just released the other book? The Naturalist? Uh, Steve Coomer. Yeah. yeah. So he was with us in the meetings, and we got together and make sure that there was really great anatomical proportions. So my character is a little bit more complicated than the logo of the Little Miami Conservancy. And uh, you can see here where some of the, uh, where I brought them into the computer. I, I started out by hand illustrating these things. And then, and you can see how those illustrations re uh, relate to the Little Miami Conservancy's logo, where they're a little bit more complicated, but um, like the logo is very simple, but the characters in the book, a little bit more like realistic, similar to the animals, but there's this kind of relationship where they relate aesthetically. And that was part of it too, what Bill was saying was, we wanted to represent the conservancy to, very, to a very young audience and get this into their, mind, into their minds and why they should care very early in their lives. You know what, your art reminded me a little bit, uh, it's, it's got a little bit of a Charlie Harper mm -hmm. feel to me yeah. um, in that, I mean, I love his prints, yeah. but that's what I saw a little bit. Do, do and you that's a, he, uh, Charlie Harper is just a wonderful influence on my life. I grew up... Um, and Cincinnati artist yeah, that uh, yeah. many people know. Yeah. And um, like I would, you know, you go to the doctor's office or my doctor's office when I was a kid and it's a scary, very scary moment and you have these beautiful prints and you just get lost in them and you don't even think about how nervous you should be because <laughs> there's this like a day in Eden or something like that. So he was such a beautiful uh, benefactor to the, to the uh, local nature community uh, with Cincinnati Nature Center, with Wynton Woods. Uh, I think, did he help uh, Little Miami Conservancy at all? I don't think, I don't think so. We but a lot any, of the yeah. local conservancies, mm -hmm. he really helped out with donating artwork or creating artwork for them. And so he was a, a huge influence. I wanted to capture that uh, 
his look, tone, and feel in the book as well. Okay, so that wasn't it was intentional yeah, there, yeah. but now Bill, Bill is a semi-retired attorney, mm -hmm. um, but illustration is your career. Is this? the first time you've done a children's book? Yes, it is. Okay, well what did you take away from this experience? It was really wonderful to get into. A lot of my pieces are kind of, um, I'll, I'll be inspired by a butterfly I see, so I developed that image of that. Um, this was very cool because there was char character development, so I had to think about how does Sunny progress, or how, did, how do you have a male versus a female like heron when they look so similar. Some br br uh, species of birds look very different, like a female rum than a male, or a female, uh, sorry, male cardinal, female cardinal, look very different color-wise, but herons are so similar, so I would do little differences, and like maybe one's got a little plume, and the other one's got a little more like, uh, like a color to her, and him, yeah. Oh, well, that, that's fun. So that was really fun, yeah. yeah add that. And how long does it take you to to create uh, like one page because there's looks like there's several layers yeah. that you're putting in. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we probably started touching base on the book in early 2015 and then I did some initial sketches as you saw I would go out in nature and study animals. Steve Coomer's book was such a wonderful asset to be able to reference that and you can get that through the the conservancy as well and at local bookstores as we'll we'll discuss later but um yeah, just seeing these really co great references uh, and basically just starting with pencil, observation, and then starting to digitize it. So a long story, I apologize, but basically um, maybe five hours a page? I'm not sure. Okay. It's kind of hard because it, it would come in waves. So it took us probably, when the rubber met the road, about six months of, of good work. But that's like six months as like, you know, on the weekends and the evenings. Development. Yeah. And one, one also one of the neat things about your book is uh, in the back you have picture, real pictures of these mm -hmm. animals. Why did you want to include that in the book? Well, <coughs> we thought that uh, e the book might tell a neat l story, but it's, uh, it's fiction. And we thought it would be really amazing if the child could know, hey, these are real characters. <laughs> these, we didn't make these up. Here's a smallmouth bass. Here's a great blue heron. So in the uh, glossary, we included all of the characters and many of the other critters in the river just to show that these critters are really there. No, and it's a great way to learn about them, isn't it? Right. Teachers love this book. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. What age would you say is appropriate for, for this book? <clears throat> Uh, you know, from the standpoint of readers, I think uh, from beginning readers up to 10 or 11, uh, but our, we're really aiming to for families, for mom and, and daughters, uh, uh, for as, because they do this together. You know, uh, a very young child can enjoy this book but can't read it, <clears throat> you know, but mom can read it and, and they can go through the pictures. I, I've had this with my own grandchildren. And after one or two readings, they say, oh, there's Ray, Crayfish Ray. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they get it, you know, and, and it draws them into that. That's wonderful. Well, how, let's make sure to tell people how they can get a copy of this book. It's a really fun book to read. <laughs> okay. I brought a little, okay. Okay. I brought a little okay. cheat sheet there. Yeah. We have three wonderful um, liveries uh, that rent canoes and kayaks. And uh, they're, they're Loveland Canoe and Kayak, Morgan's Riverside Campground, uh, River's Edge Outfitters. Uh, and then we have, uh, we have retailers. Uh, in Milford, we have uh, Road Rivers and Trails, RRT. And um, in Blue Ash, Benchmark Outfitters, Loveland, Loveland Canoe and Kayak. Again, Busy Bee Boutique. Little Miami Conservancy, that's us. We're right next to the park in Loveland. And, and then we have uh, Warren County Park District uh, gift shop at, Arc, at uh, Armco Park. Um, we have in Orga Argonia the Fort Ancient Visitor Center and also the Caesars Creek uh, Visitor Center and gift shop. And um, Yellow Springs, all the way up to the top of the river, uh, the Clifton... Uh, Clifton Mill, uh, it's a restaurant and a gift shop there. So we have a lot of ways to, uh, for the people can get the books. We'd like them to come to our place in Loveland because then we could show them the aquariums and a lot of other things we have on display there. Well, oh, wonderful. That's a plug for us. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And can they, g they can go online and, mm -hmm. and find out all those locations that you yeah. mentioned? Yes, they go to mm -hmm. on our website we'll have... The Conservancy uh, is right off the Little Miami Bike 
or the yes, right on the bike yeah. trail, yeah. Yes. right so, on the bike. Yeah. We even have an air pump uh, okay. to try to capture people. With, <laughs> with, Great. With, well, thanks so much for coming to share this uh, mm -hmm. wonderful story. It's really a fun read. I enjoyed reading it so Thank much. Thank you for having us. Yes, and we'll return with Patty Odding and Kathy Mischlick right after this break. Mm -hmm.